Ashley, I just want to jump right in because we got a lot we want to cover with you today. But your background story is fascinating. So you right after graduating from college, you you started your own company, a political fundraising firm called Golden State uh, Consultants, and it quickly became uh, an incredibly influential political firm in Southern California. I think that's just so inspiring. We need to hear more stories like that that will empower and inspire young Americans to that that we're a nation of builders, right? That we yeah. we can build a, a, a better future for our families, our communities, our cities, and our country. That we have that in ourselves to do. We don't have to be dependent on others or on a government to do that for us. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how how you went about doing that. What led you to start this company and what advice might you have for some other budding entrepreneurs out there who are thinking about doing something themselves? Yeah, so I actually started my first company, I guess you could say, when I was nine years old. Um, <laughs> my I grew up on a farm in Central California. My dad was a farmer, my dad still is a farmer. And um, I really wanted an American Girl doll. Like that was it for me. And um, he would go and pick the mistletoe out of the walnut trees and bring it home. And I would wash it and clean it and tie a bow on it. And I would sell it at my grandparents' fast food restaurant, 50 cents for a small, a dollar for a large. And my goal was to buy this American Girl doll. And um, I realized it was taking a little long to get to that $82, which I think they were at the time. And so um, I had my dad take me to his, uh, the local jeweler and I cut a deal with her that if she bought, you know, so many pieces in bulk, then I would deliver to her for Christmas season so she could give it out with the, her customers that bought jewelry. So it really expedited my sales. So my dad, I finally got the $82 that was required for this doll. He told me to go ahead and call the company um, to see if there was any other fees. And I didn't really quite understand the exercise until I called American Girl and they said it was $82 plus tax and shipping. And so it was gonna cost more money than that. And I was so upset and I got off the phone and I said, dad, they said that they're gonna charge me taxes. What are taxes? And he said, well, that's the money the government takes, for, takes from you. It's what they charge you. And I said, well, dad, I don't like taxes. And he said, well, honey, you're a Republican. <laughs> and so not only did I become an entrepreneur, but I also became a Republican at the age of nine years old. So that was my very first experience. That's amazing. So it was already in your in your makeup to be an entrepreneur. So take us 11 years, 10 years into the future yeah. uh, after having launched your, your, your first company, I guess this was your second, uh, what happened there? Yeah, so then I, I decided to do political fundraising. I had a couple opportunities, and um, my parents were kind of, you know, wondering what I was going to do with this, you know, very nice degree from UC San Diego. And I realized there's a need for political and nonprofit fundraisers. And honestly, it really came down to hard work, um, b building relationships, getting to know people, and working hard. And so I really was quickly able to grow the business. Um, I had the honor of working with so many great elected officials and candidates and organizations through Southern California, um, where I really got to pick and choose what I wanted to do. But I'll be honest with you, um, I told myself I'd give myself to the age of 30 to decide if that was really what I wanted to do. And then I would kind of reevaluate at that point. And we ended up in a special election. I don't know if you recall, uh, Bob Filner ran for the mayor of San Diego. San Diego is the eighth largest city in the country. He was elected to mayor, and then he got caught up in um, sexual misconduct. And so he was basically forced out of office. And Kevin Faulkner then beat him in a special election, which we raised two and a half million dollars in five months off of $1,000 donations. It was wow. pretty amazing. I was super pregnant with my second daughter at the time. Um, he was elected in after that point, I was really trying to decide what was going to be next um, because California is a tough place to do to do business. Um, and then around 2016, along came Donald Trump, and that's when I really got bit by, you know, the MAGA bug, I guess, and wanting to grow even even bigger and serve in a different way. That's amazing. Well, let's pick up on the. I was pregnant with my second child. Um, you have had significant influence in shaping policy in our country and the things that you've done. I actually met you during my campaign for U.S. Senate, so it was a couple years ago at this point. But you also have five kids, and you're married. And a lot of us out here who are listening and watching right now 
Um, would love some insight from you on how do you juggle it all? How does a wife and a mom and a fundraiser and a political influencer, um, how do you do all of that? What have, what have some tips and tricks been that you've figured out work for you? Um, I would say the number one reason I'm able to do what I'm able to do is because of my husband. And I think when you find your person in life who can, you know, you can share your dreams and your goals and um, your values, uh, you always prioritize your family, but knowing that you can support one another, that was, I mean, that's a game changer. And it's sad because we've seen many of our friends end up in divorces or, you know, um, their relationships falling apart. And I would not be where I am today if it weren't for the support and help of my husband. So he does the car pickups. I do the car drop offs. He got, he's coaching football practice right now. And, you know, I'll do the dance class, but it's really being a team and finding your person who's willing to support you in anything that you want to do in life. Hmm. Tell us about being the coalition's director for the 2020 presidential campaign with Trump and Pence. How did you get connected to the campaign? What was the experience like? Do you have any cool stories from that part of your life that you could share with us? Yeah. So speaking of supportive husbands, um, I was trying to decide at that point in my career, as I mentioned, I was uh, really I guess um, motivated by what I saw President Trump doing uh, in 2017, right out of the gate. And um, I was working with the California Women's Leadership Association. And so we were really elevating the work that Ivanka Trump was doing. Um, and then in, I told my husband, I said, you know, if I ever had the opportunity to work for President Trump, I just want you to know I'm going to take it. And um, I met uh, Laura Trump and Eric Trump in 2018 when they came through Southern California for an event. And then in 2019, I got a phone call from a friend of mine who I worked on a campaign with in San Diego. She was working on the campaign in, um, in Virginia. And she asked if I was going to be in town soon. And I said, yeah, I'll be there in a couple of weeks. So I went out to Virginia, sat down with her. And she asked me, would you be interested in being the executive director of Women for Trump? And I said, absolutely. And she said, great. How soon can you move here? And I said, how soon do you need me? And she said, can you be here in two weeks? And I said, yeah, no problem. So we were staying with my in-laws at the time. I went back to my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's house. And I said, Brian, you're not going to believe it. I got offered the job to run Women for Trump. And he's like, wow, they're going to let you do that from California? And I said, no, we're <laughs> moving to Virginia. And he's like, what? How much are they going to pay you? And I said, I have no idea, but like, we're doing this. I was so pumped. He was so angry. Um, <laughs> it took about three days. But once the temperature was you know, cooled down, uh, he was fully on board. I uh, lived with my in-laws in Baltimore and commuted from May to August of 2019. And then he moved out with the kids in 2019. Um, and then very quickly, I rose up through the organization and became the director, the national director of all the coalitions. So we ended up with over 45 coalitions, uh, 650 advisory board members. It was honestly such an experience of a lifetime. The month of October, October 2020, we had 117 events with first family and cabinet members alone. So it was truly um, an incredible experience. Um, one of the family members, Laura Trump, who I referenced earlier, she was the one I worked probably the closest with besides Katrina Pearson. Um, both of them are women who are so committed to America, who love our country. Um, they are so just like humble people. And that was something that I was really, um, I, I wouldn't say surprised because when you get to know the people in that world, you realize just how much they love this country. But, um, you know, they would, we were on a Women for Trump bus tour. They decided to stop at, you know, TJ Maxx or Ross or something on the way to get a pair of earrings or, you know, they don't mind staying at a Marriott. It doesn't have to be a, you know, super fancy, fancy hotel. Just such great, great women and patriots that I had the opportunity to work with.